During the height of World War II, in a time marked by desperate innovation and unconventional warfare, the British government explored a radical and seemingly outlandish idea, the construction of a gargantuan aircraft carrier made of ice. Wait till you hear this. This ambitious plan was known as Project Habakkuk, and it was championed by none other than Prime Minister Winston Churchill, a man known for his fondness of unorthodox solutions in times of crisis. The genesis of Project Habakkuk came in response to a critical problem plaguing the Allies in early 1940s, the threat posed by German U-boats in the North Atlantic. These submarines were decimating Allied convoys, and vast stretches of ocean were beyond the reach of land-based aircraft. Traditional aircraft carriers were scarce and expensive, and their steel hulls were vulnerable to torpedoes and bombs. Britain needed a new way to establish long-range air support across the Atlantic. Enter Geoffrey Pike, a brilliant but eccentric inventor who proposed a bizarre idea, a bizarre solution, build a massive, unsinkable aircraft carrier out of ice. Pike's idea was grounded in a novel material he called Picrete. This is a mixture of 14% wood pulp and 86% water. The composite material had remarkable properties. It was tougher than plain ice, resistant to melting, and extremely durable. Picrete could absorb bullet impacts without shattering, and had a much slower melting rate than normal ice. Most importantly, it could be produced at low cost on a massive scale using available sources. Churchill was intrigued. In fact, legend has it that when Lord Mountbatten demonstrated Pycrete's strength by shooting it during a meeting with top brass military, this caused the bullet to ricochet off the block and injure a wall, Churchill was immediately convinced of the project's merit. The proposed vessel was staggering in scale. Project Habakkuk envisioned a ship 2,000 feet long, 300 feet wide, and weighing over 2 million tons, later speculated to be up to 4 million tons with full reinforcements. It would house up to 150 twin-engine bombers and boast a range of defensive armaments. The hull would be refrigerated from the inside to prevent melting, using an onboard cooling system powered by diesel engines. Because of its sheer bulk, the vessel would be virtually unsinkable. Even a direct torpedo hit would only cause superficial damage. A small-scale prototype was actually constructed in Alberta, in Canada, on Patricia Lake in 1943. This model was 60 feet long and tested the feasibility of maintaining structural integrity and internal cooling. Despite initial enthusiasm, Project Habakkuk was ultimately abandoned for several reasons. First, the engineering challenges of constructing and maintaining such a massive vessel were immense. Cooling such a structure in warmer climates would require vast amounts of energy and equipment. Second, as the war progressed, the strategic need for Habakkuk diminished. The development of longer range aircraft and the introduction of escort carriers, smaller, more practical aircraft carriers, rendered the giant ship unnecessary. And the logistical demands of harvesting and shipping enough wood pulp and ice to build a full-sized Picrete vessel were daunting. The project was officially shelved by 1944. Although Project Habakkuk was never realised, it remains one of the most imaginative and surreal undertakings of World War II. It showcases the spirit of innovation and desperation that characterised this era. Churchill's willingness to entertain such radical ideas also speaks to his adaptive leadership style and openness to unconventional thinking in the times of war. Today, the remnants of the prototype lie submerged in Patricia Lake, 
and Project Habakkuk lives on in the annals of military history as a fascinating what if, a bold vision that tested the boundaries of science and engineering during humanity's darkest hour. <laughs>